Hi there everyone, today we're going to look at how to install a TAZE filter into your wiring loom prior to installing your TAZE radio. So this project just involves basic uh, soldering gear, just you know, wire cutters, soldering iron, a lighter with some heat shrink. Man, yeah. If you've never soldered before, it might be interesting for you to watch. And if you do know how to solder, then yeah, it just might be good for you to just see how it's done. And yeah. So that's the gear we need, let's get to it. First off, we'll locate the loom we want and the wires that we will be splicing. Technically, all you do is put this in between these wires, the yellow and the black, and your magical Taze filter will be eliminating any alternator wire and whatever else from your loom. So, we'll grab our loom here and we'll find a good place to to splice into the wires. So it's the one we're splicing anyway, uh, the constant power and the earth. I'm fairly certain that yellow is constant and I think red is switched power, but it doesn't really matter. The taste filter makes it pretty obvious anyway what we're doing. So since this goes, this side goes into radio, I don't want a fat box right there, so I'll space it out a little bit, so I might put it here. Near the, near the connector for the factory plug. And if you are doing this to a Mitsubishi Triton or the L200, the one that I found, the, the wiring loom that works, is the one that says Mitsubishi ASX on it. Not sure why. But you'll see more detail on that if I do an install video. Cool, so let's start. Just grab your wire cutters. These are combination pliers. And give it a snip. They're turning back now. Then we just strip wires. I like to give it a little bit of room. Just do that on all four ends. And it's much easier doing it here on a workbench than in the car. Soldering in the car is always a pain in the butt. Anyone that does radio installs will know that. It's just better to do it now. And have it all ready when we go. Yep, so that's all beautiful. Twist all the ends, so nice and tight. So that's our loom ready. Let's do the same on our fuse box slash filter. Sweet, just twist the ends. And it should look something like that. Then we'll just solder all that together. And our filter is installed. Next up, I'm going to get my heat shrink and preload the wires. This annoyingly, this cable tie here is a bit close. Let's see if I can drag it down. Yeah, there you go. So you don't want your heat shrink too close to the soldering iron because it will start shrinking before time. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having a heat shrink. So if you do notice, there actually is two earth wires. They they do they are split. They do combine into one. I I cut the one that goes into the that goes into the wiring loom end, not the the earth end, the one that you just bolt into the car. I think that makes more sense because you're not you're not filtering just body noise. You're actually filtering stuff from the actual whole car electrical system. We got our fruit shrink preloaded. Let's get our soldering iron heated up. Cool, looks like our soldering iron is heated up. So let's get to work. I'm gonna twist twist these wires together now. Gotta take a moment. I 
Should have actually given the filter a bit more, bit more length. So I'll do that now. Oops. Now I got more length. My fat fingers should be able to hold on to this fine. And I just noticed that the filter box does have an in and out. So, what I'm guessing, the in and out, the in should be going into the in, I mean, yeah, the in should be from the wiring loom end, so the one you plug into the car, it go, the power goes in through this, and then it filters out into the radio end. So that should be like that. So, I know this video is reversed, but, so in, in should be towards the white, the out should be towards the black. So now we're just twisting these together. Prior to soldering, I'll probably do uh, this side first, so just one end. Make sure those aren't touching so I don't burn anything. Let's get a bead of solder on. I am by no means a professional. So if that looks like crap, you know why. Don't breathe this stuff in by the way. Get that blob off, don't want that blobbage. By no means the prettiest, but I got full coverage, so should be a strong solder. Move on to the yellow one. My soldering tip really does need cleaning. I'm just noticing it's not performing as well as it should. Maybe it's got stage fright, but. Yeah, just clean it up a little bit. You don't you don't want to have blobs in your solder because that's gonna it's gonna prevent the heat shrink from getting a nice wrap around it. Oh god! Well, let's hope the other side's tidier for you. <laughs> that's just a mess. So anyway, that's one side done. It's a god awful mess. But now we should be able to slip our heat shrink over it. And cover up this... This joint. And as I said, some of the heat shrink has already started to shrink up. So keep an eye on that when you are soldering. Because it can be a pain in the butt. I find if you just twist it around, you can usually get it over the chunkier bits. And yeah, you can technically just cut the wires and twist them together, tape them up with black tape, but it's not really a strong joint. It's not something, I don't know, it's just, uh, yeah, they can come undone, especially when you're pushing the radio back into the dash and all that. I find the easiest way and the best, the most peace of the mind is to actually solder and heat shrink. So there's our heat shrink and just re radiate, reiterate out going into the black that's the factory that's the the side you plug into your radio in is the one that's coming to it's coming in from the factory wiring loom so now let's uh let's shrink this stuff up you technically the best way is using a heat gun but i always use a lighter because it's the most handy thing on hand waiting for the comment saying I'm doing this wrong but as you can see now it's nice and shrunk it's coated the joint and it should be strong that's way better than electrical tape and yeah that's one joint done 
So now just clean it, reclean these up again. Move them out. And we'll carry on. You apply heat shrink here again. There is a, there is a new side. So this side's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because the heat shrink is way longer than what I have room, so I might just give it a trim. Obviously don't need the full length. And my calf knife is as blunt as I don't know what. A rock face. Probably use those two ends. Should that be enough? Yeah, it should be enough. So, same process. Twist the boys around. See, some people would just leave it like that. Twist the wires around, slap some tape around it, done. But twisting wire together is never strong. When you see how like a humongously long reel. It's, yeah. I've had it fail too many times to, to trust it anymore. Cool. Move that crap aside and get the solder iron heated up again. I find usually solder applies better if you have if you preheat the wire a little bit before. Sometimes it just doesn't want to stick at all. So just Cool. Flip it over. And attack the back side. Be a little bit of a challenge, not burning my black wire. Let's see if I can ninja this into place. Yep, more or less. Heat the bad boy up. I can still see some exposed wire off on the side. So, might as well, right? We've got the luxury of doing it. So that's done. Turn my soldering iron off. So my heat shrink has shrunk a little bit. See if that's a concern later. <laughs> Always a crap has to happen on camera, don't it? So as again twist around, trying to force it over the solder. Hopefully you your solder won't I mean your heat shrink won't shrink like mine. Worst case scenario you can you can just use you can use uh, electrical tape. See like this one will most likely never go on. Let's see how shrunk it is. That's my bad. Too much heat. So I'm just gonna have to cut the heat shrink a little bit. Force it on, and I'll probably get some black tape and force it on to, over the top of it all. Sweet. Well, I finally got it over the yellow wire. It's tighter than a pair of gym pants, but that's no problem. So now I just shrink it up. As you can notice, the, the end that I cut is not shrinking anymore that's it's it's lost its ability to to do a magical shrink that's all right I'll cover it with black tape and it will be solid
So that's how you install a taste filter on your wiring loom. Now you shouldn't be getting any annoying alternator noise or LED light noise coming through your speakers and annoying the hell out of you. So it is a really simple job, pretty much just cutting, slicing and soldering. But uh, yeah, hopefully that is a help to you. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video.